1835 in Paris. The Comte de Prony confides in his wife La Comtesse d'Artels concerning the Marquise de Fleur's decision to unite her granddaughter with the troublesome Renaud de Magny. De Prony seeks out Bellini, his former flame. Aiming to ignite a scandal, he asks Bellini about her continued association with Marini. Her response is unequivocal. Marini visits at his own whim. A decade-long affair between Marini and Bellini has since dwindled. Leaving them apart, De Prony imparts the news to Bellini of Marigny's union. Undeterred, she holds fast to the belief that he will inevitably return. Nevertheless, De Prony maintains that Marigny's heart doesn't beat for another woman. Later on, Marini comes to Bellini's house. Inside, he encounters De Prony, who cynically comments on his lack of fidelity. Marini doesn't hold back and fires a similar accusation at De Prony. Upon entering Bellini's residence, Marini discovers her in a state of distress, sprawled on the floor. He attempts to offer comfort, but she resists his advances. Curious, Marini asks Bellini what De Prony said to upset her. Bellini brushes it off, claiming it's not new information, just the unkind manner in which De Prony conveyed it. Soon, the two make a hormone sandwich. Meanwhile, her mangard, the woman Marini is soon to wed, waits at her grandmother's house along with Dartels. Growing impatient with Marigny's tardiness, the grandmother advises Hermengarde to retire for the night. As she leaves, Dartels criticizes De Fleurs for marrying Hermengarde to Marini. However, she insists that this marriage will be her masterpiece. As Dartels leaves, she tells De Fleurs that Marigny has had a mistress for 10 years. Meanwhile, Marini readies himself to depart, prompting Bellini to voice her disdain. She asserts confidently that Marini will return to her, but he counters, claiming he's never felt such love for a woman, not even for Bellini. With resolve, Marini informs Bellini that this will be their final meeting. In response, Bellini bids him farewell, accompanied by her maid, Oliva. Later, Bellini, troubled by Marigny's words, is lost in thought. Oliva approaches, revealing that De Cerisi has been waiting in the library for two hours. Bellini dismisses it, and Oliva offers comfort, sealing it with a kiss. Subsequently, at the opera, Bellini arrives fashionably late and spots Marini across the room with Hermengard. Aware of the rumors circulating about her, Bellini departs with her escorts. Following the performance, De Fleurs urges Hermengard to retire for the night, as she intends to have a conversation with Marini. In the ensuing discussion, De Fleurs questions Marini, expressing concern over the persistent warnings about his fidelity, particularly in light of his past involvement with the troublesome Bellini. Marini reassures De Fleurs that his relationship with Bellini ended long ago, even before he met Hermengard. He explains that the day De Prony saw him was the day he bid Bellini farewell. While De Fleurs gains some reassurance, she worries that Bellini may attempt to disrupt the wedding. Marini counters, asserting that Bellini's pride would prevent such a course of action. Curious about how a renowned playboy like Marini became entangled with Bellini, De Fleurs presses for the full story. Reluctant at first, Marini ultimately relents, recounting the tale of how he and Bellini first crossed paths a decade ago. That summer, Marini reminisces about his return from Baden, indulging in pursuits of pleasure and chance. He recalls an evening at the opera, accompanied by a possessive married woman. Afterward, Marini departs from her in the opera house, heading to rendezvous with a man named Count Mole, who shares a tale of a woman he encountered in Malaga. This woman, he reveals, is the offspring of a Spanish matador and an Italian princess, her life having taken a dubious turn in Seville before finding sanctuary in marriage to a wealthy English baron. This woman, as it happens, is Bellini. Incredulously, Marini scoffs and jests at the man's story, receiving a quiet warning to temper his words. Yet, Bellini overhears. Marini and Bellini engage in an extended, intense gaze. Later, at a costume party, Marini joins Mariel and Bellini's soon-to-be husband, Sir Reginald Annesley. The atmosphere turns uncomfortable, with Bellini's clear disdain for Marini evident. During the meal, the man passes around a locket bearing an obscene image. Bellini refrains from looking, simply passing it along. Marini, eager to test the boundaries, sips from Bellini's glass. She sharply rebukes him, but Marini insists he simply wishes to understand her better. In a surge of frustration, Bellini seizes the glass, shattering it in her hand and drawing blood. Marini attempts an apology, but Bellini continues her approach, prompting him to reclaim his apology. Bellini departs, leaving Marini behind. Later, in conversation with Marul, Marini confesses his desire for Bellini's affections. Yet, Mariel cautions him, insisting that Bellini harbors a deep resentment towards him. Amidst a performance, Marini approaches Bellini, expressing a wish to marry her then and there, were it not for her impending nuptials. Bellini retorts, deeming him too young or not English enough. Marini offers an apology, explaining that he was simply making a casual conversation. Unmoved, Bellini dismisses him, heading off to partake in a game of chance. 
Marini approaches, seeking to engage Annesley in a game. Later, just before the wedding, Marini endeavors to see Bellini once more. However, Mariel, acting on Annesley's orders, intervenes, revealing that Bellini enjoys provoking Annesley with tales of Marini's escapades. Despite Rule's attempts to dissuade him, he imparts a clue about Bellini's whereabouts. Marini arrives to find Bellini in prayer. He joins her, but as she concludes, Bellini slips away, concealing herself in her carriage, leaving Marini bewildered. In his pursuit, Marini attempts to intercept her carriage, longing for a glimpse. Eventually, he encounters her and, in a moment of recklessness, kisses her. Annesley witnesses this and challenges Marini to a duel. Marini emerges victorious, opting to fire into the air, sparing Annesley. Yet, Annesley's shot finds Marigny's chest. Carried home by his friends, they summon a surgeon. However, the procedure is disrupted by Vellini, who licks Marigny's blood, heightening the risk of infection. For two agonizing months, Marini languishes in bed, following the doctor's orders faithfully, even resorting to consuming chicken blood in hopes of a cure. Marini confides in Diefler's, expressing his yearning to regain his health to see her once more. Eventually, Vellini relents and visits Marini, their passion rekindling. In time, Vellini departs Annesley after a heated altercation, leading to an unfortunate injury. Annesley, inebriated and desolate, mourns on the floor. Vellini confesses her love for Marini. Word spreads that Vellini has left her spouse, casting Marini into a sensational scandal, unbeknownst to Vellini. Marini confides in Diefler's, recounting the genesis of their 10-year liaison. Yet, the grandmother implores him to recount the intervening years. Marini proceeds to recount their departure for Algeria and the birth of their daughter. Tragically, the child succumbs to a scorpion bite. In their anguish, Bellini refuses to part with their daughter's decaying remains. Eventually, they incinerate the child's body. Bellini descends into despair, and their once passionate relationship devolves into toxicity. Marini reflects on ending things with Bellini, though he assured her they could still remain friends. Surprisingly, they spend even more time together now that they're apart. As Marini resumes his bachelor life, Bellini sets her sights on Cerisi. However, their relationship proves just as toxic. Bellini confides in Marini, admitting she was happier with him. She reveals that Cerisi is overly submissive and dull, unlike her dynamic with Marini. Bellini questions if Marini is content, aware of his encounter with a woman in London who accompanied him back to Paris. Marini denies any involvement with the woman Bellini mentions, yet her jealousy is palpable. She presses him about their meeting at the opera prompting Marini to confess that this woman is the first he's ever truly loved. With tears in her eyes, Bellini understands she has no claim. Despite their emotional exchange, they share an intimate moment. Bellini persistently delves, coaxing Marini to describe his lovemaking with the new woman. He paints a contrasting picture, depicting the new woman as reserved and distant, almost tearful during their intimacy. Bellini presses on, questioning why Marini chose to replace her with this noble, reserved woman. She grapples with comprehension. Diefler seeks further insight. Marini deeply appreciates her for not judging him, acknowledging that even his own family struggled to understand him. Tenderly, Marini kisses her hand, recognizing her as his true mother. The grandmother reassures him that her sole aim is to support her granddaughter's happiness. In due course, Marini and Hermengard are wed. As the ceremony unfolds, Dartels and Diproni seem unsettled. Diefler sheds tears as the wedding commences. In the distance, Bellini observes from afar. Several months later, a letter from Paris arrives, addressed to Marini. Diefler suspects it's from Bellini, who has re-emerged after keeping a low profile since learning of Marigny's marriage. Diefler believes Bellini is counting on the notion that Marigny's affection for Hermengard may have diminished by now. After a boat ride, the couple returns. Diefler hands the letter to Marini, encouraging him to read it with Hermengard as they dry off by the fire. Without saying a word, Marini smiles and crumples the letter throwing it to the fire. He then kisses Hemingard. Later, Marini brings a gun and meets with Bellini by the sea. He quickly asks what Bellini is doing there. She replies that she wants to live there, close to the sea. Bellini makes advances on Marini, but he relents, saying he can't betray his promise to Hemingard. Bellini concludes that he should just shoot her so she won't feel pain anymore. However, Marini hesitates. Bellini sits by the edge and tries to fall to the ground to off herself. Marini immediately catches her and embraces her. Soon, the two kiss passionately. Later, Marini returns and leans in to kiss his wife. She tries to push him away because Diefler's is napping in her chair right in front of them. However, Marini persists, and Hermengard somewhat gives in to the pressure. Yet, she quickly asks him to take their dogs out. As Marini leaves, Diefler's informs Hermengard of her plan to head to Paris due to the harsh winter, which affects her joints. Hermengard expresses a desire to accompany her, but Diefler's advises against it. 
citing the many distractions in Paris and the potential pitfalls for a married woman. They bid farewell to Diefler's. Later, during a horseback ride, Hermengard becomes emotional. They soon discover that she's pregnant. Marini is overjoyed but also apprehensive about what lies ahead. Hermengard goes fishing and spots a familiar figure, a mysterious woman who frequents the spot. It turns out to be Vellini. Overwhelmed, Hermengard sheds tears, realizing that Marini is still being unfaithful. Marini and Bellini rendezvous at her residence. As they're about to become intimate, Marini wrestles with guilt for betraying his wife. He sits in contemplation, recalling a story about thoroughbred horses that, after being lightly injured in battle, inexplicably became drawn to pain and impaled themselves in the heart. He draws a parallel to his situation with Bellini. After their encounter, Marini hears his horse outside. Bellini checks but finds no one there. In the morning, Marini returns home and finds his wife sleeping on the bed with her shoes still on. He gently removes her shoes and adjusts her position for comfort. He tries to cuddle with her, but she rebuffs his advances. Marini soon notices her man god growing increasingly distant. When he asks about it, she insists that everything is fine. Tensions escalate, and her man god implies that anyone close to Marini becomes entangled in his troubles. In the end, Marini walks out. Meanwhile, during a carriage ride, Diproni and Dartels converse. Diproni shares that he has discerned that Marini is still meeting with Vellini using logical thinking. They both conclude that although Marini is deeply in love with Hermengard, he will never truly part ways with Vellini. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.